the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority, and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the finals of the Asian Handball Championship, which was held between the national teams of Qatar and Japan at the Khalifa Sports City Hall. The closing ceremony was attended by the Vice President of the GSA, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs and Vice President of the Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, Vice President of the International Federation for the Continent of Asia, Bedr Diab, President of the Bahrain Handball Association, Ali Ishaqi, and a number of officials from the Asian Handball Federation. After the end of the match, His Highness Sheikh Khalid crowned the top three winners. His Highness congratulated the Qatari team on winning the Asian title, praising the team's outstanding level throughout the tournament. He also praised the performance of the runner-up Japan's team to win the silver medal and reach the final match, wishing it better luck in the upcoming tournaments. His Highness also congratulated the national team for qualifying for the World Cup finals for the seventh time in its history and for winning the third place in Asia. Wishing the team good luck in the upcoming tournaments. His Highness Sheikh Khaled praised the success of the Asian Handball Championship, the hosting by the Bahrain Handball Association, and the efforts of all the working committees that resulted in the success of the event. His Highness expressed appreciation to all participating teams, hailing the large attendance and support for the national team. He wished Bahraini handball further success. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Azzayani, attended a reception held by the Indian Embassy marking India's 75th National Day. Senior state officials and ambassadors accredited to the Kingdom were also present. The Foreign Affairs Minister delivered a statement during the ceremony expressing congratulations to the Indian government and people as well as to India's ambassador to Bahrain, Vinod K. Jacob, on the occasion affirming the depth of the distinguished deep-rooted bilateral relations as well as the two countries' constant keenness to enhance their ties. He wished India further progress and prosperity. Dr. Zayani indicated that since the establishment of the bilateral diplomatic relations in 1971, the Kingdom has been keen to strengthen its ties and cooperation with India in all fields. He stressed that under His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's leadership, Bahrain attaches utmost importance to its partnership with India, adding that he looks forward to creating more cooperation opportunities with India across various fields of common interest to achieve the aspirations of the two countries and people. For his part, the Indian ambassador expressed pride in the foreign minister's attendance of the ceremony and the sincere sentiments he had expressed. He also affirmed his keenness to continue bolstering the joint action and coordination, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Azayani, received the Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghait. The meeting discussed the cooperation and coordination between Bahrain and the Secretary General of the Arab League. They also reviewed the ongoing preparations for the 2024 Arab Summit in its 33rd ordinary session, scheduled to be held in Bahrain. The Minister highlighted the Arab League's efforts led by the Secretary General in supporting the joint Arab work in various domains. The meeting also discussed the latest regional and global developments, particularly in Gaza Strip, noting the importance of ensuring the protection of the civilians and the speedy entry and delivery of humanitarian aid. 
The Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghaid, visited the Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat, where he was welcomed by the Dirasat Board of Trustees Chairman, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, as well as several officials and staff. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed underlined the major role played by the Arab League in enhancing the joint Arab action across the various fields to face all the challenges. He also praised the role of the Arab League chief in strengthening the intra-Arab cooperation and increasing the pan-Arab organization's contributions to finding solutions to address the current development challenges. The Dirasat board chairman stressed the need to enhance the cooperation among the Arab intellectual centers to formulate common visions, to consolidate and strengthen the Arab ties, noting that the current regional and global changes consolidate the role of research centers in supporting countries' development plans. The Arab League Secretary General praised the efforts of the Dirasat Center as a national intellectual institution aimed at developing research and consolidating intellectual partnership in the region. The Dirasat Executive Director, Dr. Hamad Ibrahim Al Abdullah, highlighted the importance of partnership among the Arab centers in facilitating dialogue and cooperation among the experts and stakeholders, in addition to enhancing the research cooperation and finding innovative solutions. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce launched the Industrial Investment Guide, Tasnia, as one of the initiatives on the industrial sector strategy 2022-2026. The initiative aims to improve investors' experience and facilitate their access to information and services. It also comes as part of the ongoing effort to create the optimal investment environment in the industrial sector through unifying the sources on which the investor relies, clarifying future strategic direction in addition to documenting the steps for providing all the services and introducing the supporting bodies. The Industrial Investment Guide includes the most prominent capabilities and incentives offered to the sector, a matrix of industrial activities and licensed entities, in addition to options for establishing industrial projects in partnership with the private sector and strategically targeted industries. In this regard, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce stresses the necessity of working to continue the flow of investments in promising sectors, such as the industrial sector, due to its role in the growth of the national economy and providing more promising opportunities for the citizens. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues its initiatives and projects aimed at enhancing the quality of health services according to an integrated system that ensures the advancement of various aspects of the health sector. The Kingdom has not overlooked the importance of having a scientific and practical mechanism that regulates policies and procedures for providing, distributing and managing medicines appropriately with continuous review of pharmaceutical evidences and policies for providing and the use of medicine in a sustainable manner. The Supreme Council of Health is working closely with all the partners to begin the implementation phase through which the Shifa Health Insurance Fund will be activated. Among its most prominent task is the unified purchase of medicines and supplies for the health system and the unification of the drug guide among all the health service providers and those concerned with medicine. The management of drug use policies and drug evidence is an integrated process of patient care, enabling physicians, pharmacists, and other health care professionals to work together to promote clinically sound cost-effective drug therapy and positive therapeutic outcomes. The drug use system goes beyond a list of drugs approved for the use of hospitals or the health system to include the existence of a clear scientific mechanism and methodology. They used to evaluate scientific, clinical and medical studies and determine the approach to selecting the drugs for various diseases and conditions. The drug utilization system also includes policies and procedures for the appropriate procurement, distribution, administration and use of drugs, as well as additional prescribing guidelines and clinical information that help the healthcare professionals promote high quality care and optimize the rational use of resources. 
The Customs Affairs joined the world in celebrating the World Customs Day, which is marked on 26th of January. The Customs Affairs is implementing a development plan aimed at employing modern technologies and protecting the borders, developing customs capabilities, facilitating travel and trade, protecting society, and developing supervisory methods. It also aims to provide customs facilities and quality services to customers, accelerating the pace of customs work and bringing about the necessary development in the work cycle to keep pace with the global developments and contribute to achieving excellence. The Customs Affairs believes in the human cater, which is the basic foundation of customs work, which was done through the launch of the first Fikr training forum caring for the next generation by enhancing the culture of knowledge and professional pride of customs. This qualitative shift in customs work comes within the framework of the custom affairs strategy for the years 2021-2024 and the strategic objectives it contains, which are to align plans with the government's work programs, the Economic Vision 2030, and the policies of the World Customs Organization, in addition to the importance of enhancing constructive and continuous cooperation between the concerned authorities. Bahrain national football team defeated its Jordanian counterpart 1-0 at Khalifa International Stadium as part of the thir third round of the group stage of AFC Asian Cup 2023 in Qatar. The winning goal was scored by Abdullah Youssef in the 34th minute of the match, making the national team lead the group with six points, followed by the South Korean team with five points, then the Jordanian team in third place with four points. With this victory, Bahrain national team has qualified for the round of 16 in the tournament in first place to meet the Japan team, which ranked runner-up in Group 4 with 6 points. The South Korean team also qualified also as a runner-up and the Jordanian team was among the best three in the tournament. We are very happy with this victory and qualification is the first leading team in the group and our focus will be on the next match with the Japanese team. The Bahrain football team has enough strength to compete in the upcoming matches with resolve and perseverance. We will now focus on a match with Japan. We are confident in the team and we will continue to win with the players' determination. Thanks be to Allah, we scored the goals we wanted in the match, winning three points and qualifying. I thank all the supporters. I know a lot of people came from Bahrain. I cannot thank them enough, and I wish we would always make them happy with victories. <laughs>